I think the second law is a very valid argument against evolution. The second law tells us basically everything's falling apart. Okay, the Bible teaches that clearly. Everything is waxing old like a garment. Here, uh, here's Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. Here she is at 3,000. Okay. Uh, now. The evolutionists will say you can overcome the second law by adding energy. This is ludicrous. Uh, you, adding energy is destructive unless there's something to utilize the energy. The Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day. They didn't organize anything. Okay? We returned the favor a few years later and added energy to a couple of their cities and didn't organize a thing for them. Adding energy is destructive unless there's something to use the energy. It's true the sun adds energy to the earth, but it's going to destroy the roof on your house, not build it. The sun's energy is going to destroy your entire house. It's going to destroy the upholstery on your car. It's going to destroy the roof on your car. It's going to destroy the paint job on your car. There's only one thing that can use the sun's energy. By the way, the moon gets the same energy we do. Okay? It doesn't make anything up there. The sun's energy is added to the earth, and, and chlorophyll is able to capture it and use it. So it's a silly argument to say, all you got to do is add energy and that'll fix it. That is simply silly, not true. DNA code is supposed to prove some kind of evolutionary relationship is ludicrous, okay? The DNA code is so incredibly complex to begin with. I could point out that Microsoft PowerPoint and Microsoft Word have millions of exact lines of code. I mean, they're identical. I can click spell check in Word, and I can click ch spell check in PowerPoint, get the same results. That proves this all evolved from Morse code over billions of years. <laughs> One single cell in your body is more complex than the space shuttle, and the average human has 50 trillion cells, so it's ludicrous to say that we, uh, this all just came about by chance and we're poorly designed. Secondly, poor design is a lousy argument for evolution. So when you, especially when you consider, as I said earlier, we are a copy off of 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 a copy of Adam. It's amazing we're sitting here talking about it. You'd make a, take a piece of paper, copy it on the copy machine. Now take your copy and make a copy. Take that copy and make a copy. Do that about a thousand times and see if you can still read it. Get a computer program, any computer program. Make a copy it onto a disk. Then copy it to another disk. Then copy it to another disk. Do that a thousand times. See if it'll still run. That's the DNA code that we have, folks. It's incredibly complex. I think the only reason anybody would say this happened by chance and there was no designer is because they don't want to find that designer. The atheist can't find God for the same reason a thief can't find a policeman. <laughs> All the experiments so far in the laboratory to try to produce life, Miller, uh, Oprin, uh, Yuri, have, have really made the problem more complex. In this picture here, they show they're using methane, ammonia, water vapor, and hydrogen. Notice they exclude oxygen. They call, it, they call it a reducing atmosphere because they know if there's any oxygen, it'll, it'll oxidize whatever tries to get together. All they've been able to do so far is get a few little amino acids, which is kind of like getting a few letters of the alphabet by randomly dropping toothpicks, okay? That can happen, I agree. You could drop toothpicks and make letters of the alphabet, but that would not explain how you get an entire book. And the difference from a few amino acids to one living cell is like the difference between a few letters of the alphabet and a whole book. It's just orders of magnitude. Now, if he wants to believe that, he can believe that, but again, he's, he's left science and gone to religion. And if he says evolution only deals with after life is here, then he's, uh, he doesn't have a coherent theory because uh, he needs to have something all the way back to the beginning, in my opinion. Lucy was nothing but a three-foot-tall creature, probably some type of chimpanzee kind of animal. Charles Oxner had studied every single bone of Lucy and said it's, it's not a missing link. He did what's called a computer, computer multivariant analysis. I would point out, though, uh, from a much bigger picture, no fossils count as evidence for evolution. None. You can't prove this critter. Go ahead and turn it on. You can't prove Lucy had any kids. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do, which is produce something other than their kind? No fossils count as a bigger picture, and even if Lucy is something unusual in the form of a chimpanzee three feet tall with a little unusual feature, that still doesn't prove it's evolving to something else. It could have been a creature that went extinct. So this kind of evidence would not hold up for three seconds in a court of law. But see, the problem is, evolution doesn't have to be proven in a court of law. It only has to be made believable to a bunch of students who have an academic, or the teacher has an academic and psychological advantage over the students. That's why evolution, the people believe that. The guys who study Lucy say, look, this is not a missing link. Uh, Charles Oxnard, I'll show you the reference here, you can check it out for yourself, studied every single bone and said, Lucy, here we go, uh, the various australopithecines are indeed more different from both African apes and humans in most features than the latter are from each other. It's not a missing link. No fossils count to begin with, and even then, Lucy's not a good fossil to demonstrate evolution. Okay? The evolution theory has done nothing for the advancement of science. That's not why we put a man on the moon. That's not why you can do open heart surgery. Evolution is a useless theory, even if it's true. It is absolutely useless as far as science goes. 
You don't have to believe in creation or evolution to study science. You can learn about the biceps, the triceps, the deltoid, and all the different muscles of the body and never get into origins. It doesn't matter. No doctor doing surgery cares, uh, cares at all about evolution while he's cutting somebody's heart out to replace it. It's, it's a useless theory. And then, and then there is no advancement in modern science from this evolution theory. The Big Bang Theory, I think, is a great hindrance to, and many other theories about evolution are a great hindrance to science. Uh, there's all kinds of evidence against the Big Bang, the counter-rotation of at least two planets, Venus and Uranus. At least eight of the 91 known moons are spinning backwards. Uh, some whole galaxies are spinning backwards. Three planets have moons going both directions at the same time. This can't happen with Big Bang. You need to study some physics on that one. Thank you. Roaches become resistant to pesticides uh, because some, some of the roaches in that population already had a resistance. When they dug up some of the guys that tried to find the Northwest Passage, uh, we can shut it down, I don't have a slide ready for this. They were guys that froze to death trying to find the Northwest Passage up in Canada years ago. When they dug up and did an autopsy on them, they find some of them were uh, resistant to penicillin. Well, that's interesting. Penicillin hadn't been invented yet. See, there, there are some people that already have a resistance to certain things in their system. So let's say you've got a thousand roaches and five of them have a resistance to a certain pesticide because of whatever reason. Okay, you put that pesticide down, it kills all but those five. Those five then become the grandparents of everybody else, so the new roach population, and now you get a whole population of you know, resistant roaches. That, that happens. It is still a roach. It is only something already in the gene code that, that was selected. You selected for that particular thing to survive. In this case, artificial selection instead of natural selection. That is not a process that's adding information, and it's not a process that's going to turn a rock to a human. In 20 bazillion years, it's not going to happen.